Alloway, Scotland, 25th of January 1759. A storm is tearing through Alloway, but at the same time, a baby boy is being born in this very cottage. Little did his parents know, but that baby boy would in many years to come become Scotland's most famous poet and a legend in his own right. The baby boy born this night was named Robert Burns. Within time, Robert would become a poet, a romantic and a legend. In Alloway, as well as receiving the beginnings of his education, young Robert Burns creative imagination too began to form. His mother, Agnes, would delight him by singing traditional Scots songs and a distant cousin, old Betty Davidson, would hold him spellbound with tales of ghosts and witches. Roaming the countryside around his home, young Robert encountered the many beasts, birds and plants that were to feature in much of his poetry. 1766, when Robert was seven, the ever-growing Burns family moved to nearby Mount Oliphant Farm. Times were hard for the family and Robert had to work hard in the fields from an early age. At Mount Oliphant and later at Loch Lee, Robert witnessed his father struggling to make the farm pay and first-hand witnessed the harsh treatment of William Burns by the landowner David McClure who twice petitioned against him in the courts. At Mount Oliphant, when Robert was 15, he wrote his first love poem called Handsome Nell for a girl called Nellie Kirkpatrick who worked with him in the fields at harvest time. This was the first of many love poems Robert was to write for the women he would meet over his years as a poet. The influence of Robert Burns' poetry can be seen around the world today. I spoke to a young artist who in his short time as a poet and musician has been influenced by Ravi's work. So what were your feelings when you first encountered Burns' work? I thought it was amazing that a man could capture a woman's heart with a poem or a song and uh, that's the interest by me and also like I mean it was uh, brought in in schools and things like that and so I was sort of in a way kind of forced but in, uh, in good ways. It's nice to be brought your eyes open to sort of a local Casanova. A famous Robert Burns song is Red Red Rose which was written in 1794. A uh, massive part. Um, it would be hard to believe you existed in there without knowing Robert Burns was there. Um, yeah, I mean every year there's a festival, the Burns and all that festival, and uh, it's good. And everyone enjoys his birthday. It uni unifies Scotland. That's what it does. <laughs> personally enjoy Haggis and it's one that I had to recite but I can only sort of remember the first couple of lines now but I had to recite it sometime and I used to see it a lot in my work. So. <laughs>
think his image, you know, a rogue, a romantic, is something that has been constructed over time, or do you think such characteristics are evident in his writing? I think it's very evident. I think um, I think it's really obvious that he's using these words to woo these women, and uh, I think it worked. <laughs> Considerable success with the ladies, having nine children with his wife alone, but many others with different ladies over the years. The first being in 1784 when Lizzie Payton, the firm's servant, fell pregnant to him. Robert and his younger brother Gilbert worked hard to earn a small income from the family farm as their father, William Burns, became very ill. Following his death in 1784, the family moved to a farm in Moscow. Robert's real passion was poetry. Inspired by the old songs and tales he had heard in the Ayrshire countryside, he was driven to write. Oh Robbie, are you going to the tavern? Go home Hamish, I'm writing a poem. However, his financial problems continued to trouble him, which contributed to his decision to emigrate to Jamaica in 1786. Robert had met and suggested marriage to Jean Armour, who soon became pregnant with what were to be twins. However, Jean's father didn't approve of the marriage and hounded Robert in the courts. Robert soon became infatuated with a young Gaelic-speaking woman, Mary Campbell, whom he secretly married. Robert suggested Mary emigrate to Jamaica with him and sent her to Greenock to await his arrival. He never set sail for Jamaica, however, as events were to happen that would change his life and Scottish history forever. His plans to sail for Jamaica were well advanced when events took an unexpected turn. He had been advised by Gavin Hamilton, a local lawyer, to finance the voyage by publishing some of his poems, but the success of that volume, the Kilmarnock edition, caused him to reconsider his plans to emigrate. The Kilmarnock edition was published by John Wilson of Kilmarnock on the 31st of July 1786 at the cost of three shillings per copy. 612 copies were printed and the edition was sold out in just over a month after the publication. With his newfound national fame, Robert decided to head for Edinburgh where he published new editions of poetry and made a number of tours of Scotland. Burns eventually married Jean Armour, which coincided with their move to another farm in Ellisland near Dumfries, where Robert Burns eventually died. Burns died from a form of rheumatic fever, which was further worsened when he was sent to undertake a course of sea bathing in chilly waters. He died in Dumfries on the 26th of July, the same day his wife gave birth to their ninth child. Burns remains universally popular because people need that element in their life. People need that uh, the sort of the stupid romantic guy who is going around um, creating and breaking hearts, and uh, it's sort of it's it's nice. Thing. and a lot of people are influenced by him. Robert Burns may have died, but his legend was to live for many, many years to come. As can be seen here at Burns Monument in Alloway, which was erected in 1823 in honour of his life as a poet, a romantic and a true Scottish legend. Oh my love, like the man.